Hello everyone, today's video is following up from the one that I posted on kernel density, how to make a hotspot map and then convert those raster values to points, then you can join to a fishnet. With that, I received a comment that's absolutely correct, and you can use zonal statistics to do a similar function. Uh, I primarily show the way I did because of a larger paper that's attached to a project that's attached to as act as a tutorial for the student itself. With that, I want to cover those zonal statistics and how you can use a similar step or process to get similar values. It's going to be a bit different in today's video in terms of data use because I'm on my tablet and I have managed to splice my docking station, so it's a little different than my norm, but it can be used in a similar function, so I want to walk through how to do that. With that, I have Pro open, and I did update it today, so it's a little slower than it had been in the past, but what you see in front of you, and I'll turn off this layer first, is Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I had some zoning data that I pulled from their online data portal, so I'm gonna take a Little Rock, and I used symbology to code the type of zoning it has. Obviously a lot of residential, that bluish color that you see, but it acts as a unique identifier or a zone that we could use. With that, you could use census tracts, census block groups, you can go up to county, city, all of those that have actual featured layers, you could use, similar to a fishnet that each grid cell has a unique ID, you can use this similar function for that and get a density value for that. So you could attach it that way if you already have your fishnet grid, could use zonal statistics to do that. I'm gonna show you another way here with zoning data, just show you the aggregate and we can go through what that means when we look at the attribute table. I went ahead and already ran the kernel density hotspot map. You can see here, I put in ag assault, Pulled this just from their data portal as well. So it's a hotspot map of violence. Shows 500 feet. Did that just based on, I don't know their actual average street length. It's not on the top of my head like Little Rock. Tripled it to make it a little different and we had that run. So now we have that over here. So if I were to just reorder some of this and turn this on and turn off my zoning one. You can see some of our hotspots for Ag Assault. Not shocking if you're familiar with some of the other videos I did on Chattanooga. I'm gonna change the symbology pretty, oh, pretty quick. I didn't know that was already open. I just wanna change the color scheme to show the high to low, where's red to green when you need it. Is there green to red, it should be. There we are. So you'll be able to see that a lot of Chattanooga is at lower risk in terms of if we think about hot spots and red being hot, where density is high and crimes are likely to occur or violence in the future if we use it from a forecasting standpoint. We have a lot of green where it's low. Risk is relatively low or density is low in this example here since we're using, using kernel density itself. So if I were to turn off that layer, you can see a very different type of, well, like I like usually say is a weather map kind of approach to it, but you can see high to low within Chattanooga. What you could do, since we have an underlying feature layer that has boundaries or zones and it's truly our zoning data within Chattanooga, we could attach and get an average, a count, all these different statistical values based on the zone itself. Today I'm going to do an example of, based on what color it is, I'm going to get statistics based on that zone. Similar, if you had a fishnet grid, if you had census tracts or block groups, you can select your unique identifier in that data set and act as your zone, and you can get that value from our raster to it. Works well to it. At the end of the day, I did the other one because I still join it all to one file, be it random forest, RTM, or KDE. I like to do it that way, just to, it's out of habit what I did years ago, so product of how I learned it in the first place. But let's go through this now. So we have our symbology, we have our zoning. So now I wanna get our essentially average density or average risk if we think about forecasting future crime based on the type of zoning it is in Chattanooga. So with that, if I come into geoprocessing, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can type zonal. If you're familiar, it's also in the spatial analyst, ooh, too quick on this, analyst tools. So you have different options. You can do statistics, you can do to table. There's a lot here you can work with. Personally, I like to, the way to go to table because it generates it for you to where you could join this back in. You can do a lot with it. Uh, but when you open up zonal statistics as a table, we have the option here. You want to enter in your feature zone data. This is the layer itself that has the zones in it. So for us, it's the zoning data. If you're using a fishnet here, put that fishnet grid layer in here, 
good to go. So zoning that's projected. Our field, it's gonna be our last one. It's the zone itself, and that's where it has, be it commercial to residential to mix in about 30 of other categories within that. It has a separate code book. Once you have that, it's gonna ask you for the raster that you want to use. Already made that, so it's truly a kernel density of our ag assault in Chattanooga. Output table, just know where you're storing it. As you can see at the top here, I just saved this one on my tablet as YouTube videos, so just a quick example of that. With it, it will give you the option of what statistics you want. So you can, I'm gonna do all for this one just to kind of show you. We have the option within it to get a lot of our descriptive statistics, measures of central tendency, measures of variability, pretty handy. And that's why I like the aggregation here because we'll see the count by zone of how many raster cells of those 500 foot cells are within each zone. And we see that overall average density or risk value of where violence is likely to occur in the future based on this one zone wise. With that, we're gonna keep all, gonna keep everything pretty standard here and hit run. Hopefully this is halfway decent speed wise. It's been a little slower since I updated. I don't know if that's my tablet or just the update to Arc Pro. I'm gonna put it up to Arc Pro because this tablet doesn't have a lot going on in general and I haven't added too much to it since I got it back. We'll let this run for a second. If it takes too much longer, I'll just hit pause and there we go, it's already building for us. Had a little cough, so let's let the build update for a second. This is a shock, hope. I haven't had ArcGIS crash. There we go, there's our table. Warnings, we had some zeros. I already know this because I've ran it before, just based on the data itself. So I open this table attribute table and open it. It's gonna give us truly the aggregate sale. Imagine taking our raster cells and aggregating it based on the zone itself. So the zone ID that I chose there. So we have a the type of zone, the count. So that would be the number of cells within each zone type, this one here. The area that is, the min and max in terms of the zonal densities the range, the mean, standard deviation, the sum, the median, and the percentile for the 90th. So pretty cool stats that come with it. This is what you could join if you had your fishnets or anything with that. You could join it a number of different ways. You can export it, you can use it a multitude of ways. The cool part is you could just do a quick downward descending and look at some of your zonal types that are higher and the nice part is, and especially if you're getting into PAI, PEI, and some of those, when you look at your mean values, how many cells are within those specific types, and you can see we have, and I would have to go back to the code book and I don't have it openly available. We could look what IX4 is. I'm assuming CIV would be something civic related, but that's just a guess. You can scroll down to where some of these at the top that have higher density, it's a bit smaller areas based on the count of cells within it. As we scroll down, we start to see R is typically residential, commercial, and then some of those are probably mixed in between, different types of residential. So we see that we do have a lot here, and that's the probably big, right, single family would be my guess, residential. But another way to use zonal statistics for your benefit, could do this with the grid cell, and I just wanted to show another way of grabbing that data and attaching it or summarizing it from a number of of different data points or raster data below. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. This is just a supplemental video concerning the comment. Absolutely right, zonal statistics are super handy with raster data. Get familiar with them. I usually cover it at the end of the semester with students, but it depends on just how the course progresses with that. Until next time, take care.